To all pastors, seminarians, and congregation members joining us for the testimony on the revelation of the Old and New Testaments by chapter, Shincheonji Online Seminar, welcome. I am Hong Chi Ho, your presider for today. The history of the Bible, which began long ago with the tree of life and the tree of good and evil in Genesis, has currently reached the age of fulfillment of Revelation, the last book of the 66 books of the Bible. During the long 6,000 years, many things have been done to accomplish the will of God, the Creator. In this Shincheonji online seminar, we would like to testify to God's purposeful will and the order of history which God has spoken all throughout the Bible according to the five W's and one H. Through the words of today's testimony, we hope that it will be a precious time to fully understand the mystery and meaning of the Kingdom of Heaven hidden in each chapter of the Old and New Testaments. First, we will pray to our Father God with a united heart. Holy Father God, you who we are truly so thankful to, we thank you for creating the heavens and the earth and for giving us the precious word of life. We give thanks also for the grace of Jesus who shed his blood on the cross for us and freed us from our sins. He testified to all peoples under the heavens the true meaning and reality of God's new covenant, the revelation, and the parables of the secret of the kingdom of heaven, which no one knew until now. At this time, we give our heartfelt thanks for the revelation of the Old and New Testaments chapter by chapter that will be given today. Please grant the heart to see, hear, and understand to the family of faith who has gathered before the word to listen to today's seminar so that they can be born again into the truth. We pray that you may, not, you may unite us all as one in you, and we pray this all in the name of Jesus, who is life. Amen. Today, we will receive the testimony of the word titled, Lesson 1, God's Covenant, Abraham, and Revelation. In Isaiah chapter 14, God said, Surely as I have planned, so it will be, and as I have purposed, so it will stand. And he made a covenant in every age according to those words, and fulfilled it without adding or subtracting a single thing. Through today's seminar, we hope that you will realize the power of God who promises and always fulfills His promises from Genesis to Revelation and that it will be a precious time to perceive the value of believing in God and the Bible. Now we will welcome instructor Jin Mangi from Songnam Church of John Tribe who will deliver the message today. Greetings pastors, theology students, and church members all over the world who carry out a faith walk in hope of heaven and eternal life. It is nice to meet you. My name is Jin Mangi. I am the head of Songnam Church of John Shrive of Shincheonji Church of Jesus. I sincerely thank you for attending Shincheonji Online Seminar, the testimony on the revelation of the Old and New Testaments by chapter. God's words of life, which you'll be looking at today, is intermediate lesson number one, titled God's Covenant, Abraham, and Revelation. Main reference, Genesis chapter 15, Exodus chapter 12, John chapter 19 verse 30, and Revelation chapter 21 verse 6. There may be pastors who know this, 
and some who may not know this. Regardless, please listen to the explanation that is given at this time. Let me concisely go over some key points. These words were recorded approximately 3,500 years ago from today. The recorder is Moses. He wrote the things that he saw, heard, and received from God, including Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And we call them the five books of Moses. Let me introduce to you the main characters. Abraham was a 10th generation descendant of Noah. He was the son of Terah, the descendant of Shem. Moses was a 4th generation descendant of Jacob from the tribe of Levi, son of Amram. At the time of the fulfillment of the prophecies of the Old Testament, the shepherd who carried out the work of fulfillment was God's advocate, Jesus. At the time of the fulfillment of the New Testament, the shepherd who carries out the work of fulfillment is Jesus' advocate, the one who overcomes. Now I will speak about God who fulfills the prophecies that He promised. Let us first read Isaiah chapter 14, verse 24 in one voice. The Lord Almighty has sworn, Surely as I have planned, so it will be, and as I have purposed, so it will stand. Yes, you read well. God who is in spirit prophesied the future events through the prophets that He had chosen. And God, He always fulfilled His prophecies. Why did He work this way? The reason is, by fulfilling His prophecies, God proved that God is what? Alive. God prophesied through Abraham the future events of His descendants and made a covenant and God fulfilled this prophecy through Moses approximately 400 years later. Let me give you the background of why God made a covenant in every generation. Approximately 6,000 years ago from today, God made a covenant with Adam whom He created. The content of the covenant was to take care of the Garden of Eden, to protect it, which God gave him, and regarding the fruit of the tree of life and the fruit of the tree of good and evil. If one eats the fruit of the tree of life, one will live forever. But if one eats the fruit of the tree of good and evil, then one will die. Which was why a covenant was made to never eat the fruit of the tree of good and evil. But Adam and Eve were deceived by the serpent. They broke their covenant with God, and they ate the fruit of good and evil. As a result, God, who is life, left Adam, who betrayed. Afterwards, the world of Adam was filled with wickedness. So God ended the world of Adam the sinned with flood, he made a covenant with the ninth generation descendant of Adam, Noah, and he began the work of recreation. However, even the world of Noah that made a covenant, only soon after they began, Satan entered Noah's descendants, Ham and Canaan. They deceived God's chosen people, had them betray, and they were cursed and scattered. Afterwards, God made a covenant of the future events with the tenth generation descendant of Noah, Abraham. Then let's find out the covenant that was made with Abraham. What is the content of the covenant 
of what God made with Abraham. In order to understand the content, we must read Genesis chapter 15, verse 13 to 14. Then the Lord said to him, Know for certain that your descendants will be strangers in a country not their own, and they will be enslaved and mistreated four hundred years. But I will punish the nation they serve as slaves, and afterward they will come out with great possessions. Yes, you read well. In Genesis chapter 12, God chose Abraham, had him pass through the R of the Chaldeans, and Haran, and go to the land that God commanded, which is Canaan. There, God made a covenant of the future events of Abraham's descendants. So if you look at the content of the covenant made with Abraham, is that his descendants will be in a strangers in a country not their own. They will be enslaved and be mistreated 400 years. But afterwards, God will punish the nation they serve as slaves, and the descendants will come out with great possessions. And to organize this, we can see that the Israelites will go to Egypt, be enslaved, and after four generations, they will come out of Egypt. They will go to the land that God promised, conquer Canaan, govern, and live there. And after God made a covenant with Abraham, he made sure that the situation will lead the descendants will go to a Gentile nation. He made Isaac's eyesight poor, and instead of the first son, Esau, the second son, Jacob, was blessed. And from Rachel, the woman that Jacob loved, gave Joseph, and had Jacob love Joseph more than other brothers. So the brothers were jealous and envious of Joseph, sold him to a Gentile nation, Egypt. So Abraham's descendants, the family of Jacob going to a Gentile nation, Egypt, all of this was not a coincidence. It took place under God's providence in order to fulfill the covenant that he made with Abraham. Also, the fact that God fulfilled his covenant without anything added to or subtracted from it serves as a very important proof that God is alive. Now let's look at how the covenant with Abraham was fulfilled through Moses. Let's look at the content and the process. Let's read Exodus chapter 12, verse 12 to 14. On that same night, I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn, both men and animals, and I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. This is a day you are to commemorate. For the generations to come, you shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, a lasting ordinance. Yes, you read well. So after God made a covenant and promise with Abraham in order to fulfill this, God had the family of Jacob go to a Gentile land, Egypt, be fruitful and multiply. And when the number of the Israelites grew large, the king of Egypt, Pharaoh, he gave them hard labor and enslaved them for approximately 400 years. As a result, God's people cried out to God. And God, in order to bring them out, chose Moses, sent Moses to Egypt, and struck Egypt with ten plagues. The final plague was the death of the firstborn, which brought death of everything that was born first in Egypt, whether men or animal. 
However, God made known to His people the method to escape from this plague, which was the flesh and the blood of the Lamb. They were to eat the meat, the flesh of the lamb roasted over the fire, and put the blood on the sides and the tops of the door frames in order to have the plague pass over them. And they came out of Egypt on that night. And to show that the plague has passed over them, in Chinese characters to pass and to cross over, we call this day the Passover. And this day was to be celebrated as a festival to the Lord, as a lasting ordinance for the generations to come. Those who did not receive plague at this time, the Israelites, they were saved on the event this is the event of Passover. And through this event of Passover, God's people were able to receive salvation. Next, we're going to look at the covenant that was made with physical Israel and the Ten Commandments. The Israelites who came out of Egypt arrived at Mount Sinai. And there, God makes a covenant with them. Let's read Exodus chapter 19, verse 5 to 6. Now, if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations you will be my treasured possession. Although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words you are to speak to the Israelites. Yes, you read well. After fulfilling his covenant made with Abraham, God made a covenant again with physical Israelites who came out of Egypt. And the content of the covenant is that if the Israelites keep the covenant, then God promised them to be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. And he said, do not worship any other God except God. And this command was given as the best command out of the Ten Commandments. And if they keep their covenant made with God, meaning when they obey, God would give them blessings. But if they break their covenant with God and worship Gentile gods and disobey, then instead of blessings, curses will come upon them and they will be judged. However, physical Israel who were led to the land of Canaan through Joshua, the king of physical Israel, Solomon, worshipped Gentile gods and betrayed. So God, through prophet Jeremiah, promised the creation of a new thing. The creation of a new thing is talking about the creation of new kingdom and new people who are born of the seed of God's word, not the physical seed of a sinner like Abraham's descendants. Let's read Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 22, 27, and verse 31. How long will you wander, O unfaithful daughter? The Lord will create a new thing on the earth. A woman will surround a man. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will plant the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the offspring of men and of animals. The time is coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Yes, you read well. The King Solomon of physical Israel who made a covenant with God worshipped Gentile gods and betrayed like Adam. So God promised through prophet Jeremiah the sowing of the two kinds of seeds and making a new covenant for the work of creation of a new thing. This prophecy that God gave through prophet Jeremiah fulfilled after 600 years the prophecy was given at the first coming of Jesus. Let's find out how this was fulfilled. 
The words of promise that was given by God through Prophet Jeremiah began with the work of a creation of a new thing, with the coming of Jesus, who was sinless, who was not born of the seed of a gene of a sinner, Adam. Jesus fulfilled all the promises of the Old Testament, and he sowed the promised seed at the first coming and prophesied to harvest. How did the two kinds of seeds that were promised come to fulfill? The good seed that Jesus sowed was God's seed, meaning the word of truth. But when everyone was sleeping, the weed the enemy came to sow was the devil's seed, meaning the devil's words, false truth. Jesus sowed the good seed in Jesus' field, that is, Jesus' church. And there, the weed that was sown was sown by Satan, the enemy, the pastors of Satan, the Pharisees and Sadducees. And this was the fulfillment of the prophecy of Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 27. These seeds that were sown grow in one field, that is Jesus' church. And at the second coming, the ripened crops born of the seed will be harvested. And this was preached to all peoples all over the world for the past 2,000 years. Let's read Matthew chapter 13, verse 30. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned, then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. Yes, you read well. These two kinds of seeds at the time of harvest, meaning at the time of the fulfillment of Revelation, they were grown until the end of the age, and those who are born of good seed, the sons of the kingdom, go to heaven, the barn, whereas those who are born of the weeds, the devil's sons, are tied in bundles and burned. This is the result of those who are harvested and those who are not harvested. Then pastors, theology students, and church members who are listening to these words, as we hope in heaven, mustn't we reflect on ourselves and think, am I someone who is born of God's seed or am I born of the devil's seed? If today is the time of harvest, then everyone, you who are listening to these words, have you been harvested? If you have been harvested, do you belong to the twelve tribes according to the Bible? Or are you still remaining in the spiritual field, which is church? If the time of harvest has come, then we must listen to the word and be quickly har be harvested, right? The reason is because at the time of harvest, the, those who are harvested and go to the barn, and those who are not harvested and remain in the field, their result is heaven and hell. Therefore, at the time of harvest, when we hear the news of harvest, we must be harvested, right? Let's look at now. Just like how the covenant with Abraham was fulfilled at the time of Moses, let's see how the new covenant, the prophecies of Revelation, fulfilled today at the second coming. Making a covenant with Abraham and coming out of Egypt through Moses, going to the land, the promised land, Canaan, and conquering it was an example of the journey to heaven. But their destination at the time was the land of Canaan. But our destination today is heaven, the holy city, New Jerusalem. And this process is recorded in the book of Revelation. And according to the process, there was the betrayal of the chosen people, 
destruction and salvation, and it fulfills in this way. Abraham's descendants were born of man's seed, meaning the seed of the gene of Adam who sinned. They are the subjects of the kingdom because they broke their covenant and betrayed, they are kicked outside into the darkness. However, at the time of fulfillment of Revelation today, those who were born of God's seed are God's children. They are God's kingdom and the holy nation, and they receive heaven and eternal life as inheritance. Let's read Revelation chapter 6, verse 12 to 14. I watched as he opened the sixth seal. There was a great earthquake. The sun turned black like sackcloth made of goat hair. The whole moon turned blood red, and the stars in the sky fell to the earth as late figs drop from a fig tree when shaken by a strong wind. The sky receded like a scroll, rolling up, and every mountain and island was removed from its place. Yes, you read well. These words that were prophesied approximately 2,000 years ago fulfill today at the second coming of Jesus with the return of Jesus. A promised pastor is chosen and the sun and the stars of heaven that boasted about their tradition until now. The subjects of the kingdom who made a covenant with God that is the first heaven and the first earth meaning spiritual Israel, is judged. And those who come from the east and the west, born of God's seed, are harvested. They're sealed. And they're recreated. They are seen in Revelation chapter 14, verse 4, as those who are purchased from among men and offered to God and to the Lamb as the first fruits. And the place where they're gathered, Mount Zion, is the barn, the heaven, where the wheats are gathered. Now let me tell you about the new covenant and the sealed twelve tribes. This new covenant that was prophesied through Prophet Jeremiah was promised because the Abraham's descendants, physical Israel, worshipped Gentile gods and broke the first covenant. This is why God made a promise of the creation and the establishment of a new covenant. Before Jesus bore the cross on the first coming, on the Passover night, with Jesus' blood established a new covenant, and it fulfilled in that way. The Passover meal that will be eaten in the Father's kingdom at the second coming is the revealed word of the reality of the physical fulfillment of New Testament revelation. And after listening and perceiving and keeping the revealed word of the reality of the fulfillment of revelation and belonging to God's new kingdom and new people, the twelve tribes, is to keep the new covenant. And not keeping this is breaking the new covenant. The new covenant is to put revelation in our minds and write them on our hearts not add to it or subtract from it. Those who keep the new covenant are seen in Revelation chapter 7, born of God's seed, harvested and sealed, belong to the twelve tribes, meaning they are God's new kingdom and new people. The sealed twelve tribes, the 144,000, are the kingdom and priest purchased with Jesus' blood. And those who have washed their robes white in the blood of Jesus, and the people who are harvested are the multitude in white, and they make up God's new kingdom and new people. According to the promise, those who are born of God's seed and harvested, the sealed, the 
12 tribes of Shincheonji. To them, what comes down is heaven and God in the spiritual world, and they become one. So there's no more death or mourning or crying or pain. It's eternal heaven, complete heaven that is established. And this is the completion of the creation of a new thing. Let's read what it says in Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 to 6. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them, and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To him who is thirsty, I will give to drink without cost from the spring of the water of life. Yes, you read well. The completion of a creation of a new thing is take place today at the time of Revelation's fulfillment as seen in Revelation chapter 7 through the 12 tribes of those who are born of God's seed as new kingdom and new people. All these things can be perceived by receiving the testimony of the chairman of Shincheonji, who is the messenger that is sent for the churches, Jesus' advocate, the promised shepherd. Let me summarize what we went over today. God prophesies and absolutely fulfills His prophecies. The covenant that God made with Abraham fulfilled through Moses by bringing out the Israelites who were enslaved in Egypt for 400 years. And the prophecies that were given through the Old Testament prophets all fulfilled at the first coming of Jesus. And the new covenant revelation that is established in Jesus' blood fulfills completely at the second coming. Today, Jesus comes to the promised shepherd of the New Testament, shows him all the fulfillment of the prophecies of the four Gospels and Revelation, and had him testify about it to the churches. God promised the creation of a new thing, sowing of the two kinds of seed, and making a new covenant through Jeremiah. At the first coming, He came to Jesus and sowed the seed for the creation of a new thing. And at the second coming, He harvested the ripened crops and promised to create a new kingdom. And this new covenant was made with Jesus' blood. Today, at the fulfillment of Revelation, as we can see in Matthew chapter 13 and Revelation chapter 14, those who are born of God's seed, harvested and sealed, new kingdom and new people, belonging to Shincheonji, the 12 tribes, is it's what it means to keep the new covenant, become a true person of God, and receive atonement of sin. God has been working for the past 6,000 years to fulfill revelation, to create the 12 tribes. He had been carrying out bloodshedding work. The 12 tribes are born of God's seed. They're God's children. They're God's family. They're harvested and sealed. They are created after the first heaven and first earth pass away as seen in Revelation chapter 6. Their new heaven, new 
kingdom. New heaven, new earth, new kingdom, and new people. Pastors, theology students, and congregation members who are listening to these words, as we hope in heaven, let's not like be physical Israel who break their covenant. Instead, with the words of the new covenant revelation, let's be harvested, let's be clearly be sealed, belong to the twelve tribes as God's children. Those who only say with their lips, Lord, Lord, but do not know God's will or carry it out cannot enter heaven. Therefore, today, we must perceive the prophecies recorded in the New Testament, believe it at the time of fulfillment, and keep it so that we can enter our hope. Everyone, did you listen well to today's words? Next time, we will go over Intermediate Lesson number 2, the creation of the Kingdom of Heaven in the physical world as it is in the spiritual world. We will see how God, through Moses, built a tabernacle on this earth and how the will that is fulfilled in heaven is fulfilled on this earth. Let's perceive it next time. The instructor who will lecture next time is someone who testifies to the Word much better than I am, and he will testify to the Word. So please come with great anticipation, and we will meet again next time. To show that we are one in God and Jesus, we will shout, We are one, and end surpassing race, nationality, and religion, we are one in God. We are one. Let's all pray. Holy Father God, we are truly thankful and grateful that at this time, pastors and theology students and all church members who are scattered all over the world were able to come together and listen to the word of Shincheonji Online Seminar. God, the words of the revelation of the Old and the New Testaments by chapter is being clearly being testified in 5Ws and 1H in Shincheonji. So all the people who are listening to these words, will you help us to open wide the doors of our hearts so that we can perceive and understand the work that is being fulfilled on this earth and be able to participate in the work. All the words that will be testified and everyone who is listening to the words of testimony, will you allow us the ears to hear and eyes to see so that we can perceive and receive heaven and eternal life which we hope for as your precious children. God, will you protect our spirit and our flesh until the next time we meet again. We pray all this in the name of Jesus who saved us from sin in thankfulness and sincerity. Amen. Yes, thank you for listening to the end. All believers hope to enter heaven. We must clearly perceive through the Bible whether we go to heaven or heaven comes to us. What is the reality of heaven created on earth as it is in heaven at the time of the Lord's return? I pray in Jesus' name that we all perceive this, enter heaven, and inherit eternal life.
Yes, as you can see in the video, the next seminar will be on the topic of the creation of the Kingdom of Heaven in the physical world as it is in the spiritual world. The time is the same as today at 10 a.m. So I hope that you will attend and that you and I, we will all be able to enter the heaven we so desire. The Shincheonji Online Seminar, Testimony on the Revelation of the Old and New Testaments by Chapter, is being broadcast simultaneously in 24 languages around the world through the official YouTube channel of the Shincheonji Church of Jesus. We are hearing a lot of good news from all over the world and from each denomination hoping to become one with Shincheonji. If you have any more questions about Shincheonji, Church of Jesus and its doctrine, other than what you have heard today, please contact the representative number of each tribe shown on the screen. We will look to provide kind and detailed guidance. Now, we will conclude the Shincheonji online seminar at this time and pray the Lord's Prayer together. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and power and glory forever and ever. Amen. To everyone who joined us, thank you.